Starting a new Valheim world is always incredibly exciting, however it is also a bit daunting as you're starting over with nothing and you have much to do. So today I'm going to try my best to help you out and I'm going to give you a 50 step process to do it like a pro. So first thing you need to do is create a really awesome character to fall in love with and progress through your Valheim game with. Then of course you need to create yourself a new world and give it a nice memorable name and uh, also potentially choose the seed. You can go online and find a bunch of different seeds that will do different things for you like you know increasing the resources that you can find nearby or finding how or easier and all that sort of stuff if you wish today i'm just going to use a random seed because i actually think that is how the pros do it right no cheating here guys but also to show you that the 50 step process will work no matter what seed you get so once you hit the spawn point of your new world the first thing you should do is run over to this redstone right here and register the location for Ikther. And boy, we've got really lucky. This is actually really close to us. Oh, and there's a Great Dwarf. Now, that can actually happen sometimes where you'll get a Great Dwarf. Just to say, guys, don't be scared. You can fight him. You see there, if I just run and hit him and then run away a little bit, he's not really able to get a hit on us. So we needn't take any damage at this point. We can just give him a good few hits until he dies. The next thing to do is make sure your vegetation settings are on low. So you can see the way the grass and stuff looks here right now. If I go into my settings, into graphics, put vegetation down to low, boy that makes a heck of a difference so now when we're running around all the stuff that's on the floor we'll be able to find a lot easier so as we're going to be exploring what you need to do is make sure you pick up literally everything that you see i'll come on to that in a bit more detail later but having the vegetation down low makes your life a lot easier so we're at our spawn point here and the first question is which direction should we go off exploring in well to open up your map i'd say there's a couple things to consider first of all it's worth exploring uh, around the Ikther location and just heading in that general direction because at the end of the day you don't know which direction is going to be better or worse than any other so you just well try and find a base near Ikther because it will help you out later on. The second thing is check out the path that your raven took when flying in. It can sometimes reveal some different biomes. In the top right of my map right now you'll see this is saying Black Forest down here. So I'm going to head through the Ikther towards the Black Forest because we want to make our base eventually near the Black Forest. We can also see there's open ocean here and that's another thing for making our base. We want to be near open ocean. I'm going to come into that later on but these are some things to look out for when choosing a direction to go exploring in. Of course you can use the uh, comma and the period keys to zoom in and out on your mini map to make things easier to see in which direction you need to be heading. Now if like me you've got a lot of animals near your spawn point it can be worth punching down some trees if there's deer and boar around these are really useful to kill early game and what you want to do is do that until you have six or more wood like we have right here then craft yourself up a club this will mean you're able to kill the boar the deer and of course the graylings much easier you can equip the club the club i should say by pressing number two there or by right clicking it uh, to equip and of course have it on your back using r so do make sure you kill everything you see on your journey the boar the neck the deer it's all worth killing early game and also remember keep picking up everything you see it's certainly worth to kill the deer as well if you can find them and i'll show you that a bit later on uh, once we come up to one because we're going to rush the ike for fight as part of this strategy now the reason for that is ike through is super easy but then will allow us to do some mining and getting some better resources and stuff like that so i'll show you guys that in a bit now you'll also see these abandoned structures when you're out and about you can find them either on their own like this one is right here or sometimes as part of villages it's always worth going in and having a look at them as you might find some treasure inside and hopefully some beehives as well i'll make sure i find one later on in this video to show you guys that because it is super useful now uh, the other thing to say if you find a lot of resources together like there's a lot of mushrooms here like this for example it can always be worth to go onto your map and make a little marker where you found them with a little name for them just put m for mushrooms um, because they will respawn and later on in the game you never know when this stuff might come in handy the other thing to say is you see we saw mushrooms there there's now some more mushrooms right here so we can mark these there's more mushrooms right here so even though in that initial place where we marked them there wasn't loads once we start marking them all you'll see we're going to have a lot of mushrooms all together so next time i come out hunting for mushrooms i know that if i come to this area i can get an absolute ton of them very quickly and very easily and just like that on our map we have a load of mushrooms very near each other and it also shows up on the mini map so if i'm a bit more zoomed in when i'm running around i'll know in future that these can be points of interest to go and check out whilst exploring if i just so happen to be passing and then i'm going to get a load of resources that i'm not really even going out of my way to get if you see a structure like this this is also worth marking on the map these are stones in a boat shaped outline and if you dig them out you can find treasure once you have yourself a pickaxe so again we might want to come in here you might want to use a different thing and maybe a different name and stuff like that but it is certainly worth doing because again you can come back here later on to get this stuff essentially anything of interest that you find whilst exploring you want to mark on your map once you do have a bit of food make sure to eat it straight away to give yourself the health regen and also a bit of extra stamina for whilst you're running around whilst out exploring you will find rune stones like this along the way and it is worth going up to them and giving them a bit of a read so in terms of exploring for an area near your base there are a few things that you want to make sure that you meet in terms of the criteria the first of all 
all, you want to be near open ocean. There's going to be a lot of ocean exploration in this game. Being near ocean exploration is going to save you a lot of time. Just trust me on that one. The other thing is you want to be near a black forest, but not too near because the black forest mobs can be annoying and will attack your base if you're too close. Now you can see in the distance there, this is a black forest that we're looking at. If I open up my map, just down here is the start of a black forest biome. So this is a really good distance to be away from it. And uh, the other thing to mention is you might get lucky and be able to convert an existing structure or even an existing village if you find something like this, which I obviously have. You always want there to be a lot of trees nearby that you can chop down as well, so make sure that you have that too. Um, and once you have your base location, be sure to mark it on a map. So we're gonna go a little house here and mark it. Now you might not find the perfect location on night one, but do prioritize just making something up in order to make sure you can sleep through the night without having to deal with that on your first night. Either way, once you've got somewhere, what you wanna do is start by crafting yourself a hammer, which you should easily be able to do from all the stuff that you found along the way. You can then go ahead and equip that and make yourself a workbench. And of course the workbench will need to be inside a building or at least covered over in order for it to work. Now, once you have your workbench down, you can either make a house or in my case, we're just going to be converting this existing house so we can like put a door on the front here and then we can put a couple of roof tiles on just to make sure that this is entirely like closed in so that we're uh, able to sleep here tonight. We're going to need uh, some more roof tiles, it seems. And if you run out of wood like I've done right there, the best thing to do is, if possible, craft yourself a stone axe before that happens and chop down the beech trees. Or you can search for more branches or even just chop down these little trees here with your hands. And at this stage, our only goal is to get to the stage where we have enough wood to make a bed for the night with a fireplace so that we're able to sleep through the night, reset our spawn point, and then go again first thing tomorrow morning. Just remember, if you do go down the route of chopping down some of these bigger trees that you see here, once they start to fall, be very careful, because if they fall on you, they can kill you. I have died this way many, many times, much more than I'd care to imagine, but they really do do a fair bit of damage. So when they're falling, just keep an eye and make sure they do not fall right on top of you. So once you fill in the holes in your house, if this is what you're doing for a conversion, the next thing to do is to go around and just repair all of these bits here that are in poor repair. So any of the structures you find like this just out in the wild will be in poor repair. Obviously, if you make a structure yourself, then the bits that you place down are not going to be in poor repair and you won't have to do this. But if you are converting, make sure you do get it all back to being uh, in good uh, condition. So if you find a structure like this that has beds in it, you might be tempted to try to use the beds inside the structure in order to sleep through the night. However, unfortunately, this is not doable. And we're also not able to break them using the hammer. Um, so it, it seems like they're just kind of stuck there. But actually, if you get your axe out, you can hit them with the axe like that to destroy them and then just simply make yourself your own bed with the wood that you've gotten just like this there we go and at this point i can go ahead and claim the bed and uh, the next thing to do then is to get a fireplace down so that we can sleep so to do the fireplace on day one the easiest way to do this is to simply place it outside but near to your bed just like this will do fine we can look at setting up a proper cooking station and stuff like that later but this will be close enough to the um my goodness huge and like He's going a bit crazy right now. Let's try and get rid of him. Unfortunately, Hugin is an annoyance that you just have to keep talking to. Um, but that fire is now close enough to my bed, so we can actually come in here now, sleep for the night. We've set our spawn point, and we've got through night one. So on day two, you want to go exploring, have a little look around your area, and also kill lots of boar. The goal being to get enough materials to make up a crude bow, so you need eight leather scraps from that from the boar, and of course, uh, the wood as well. Then you want to make up some wooden arrows, and then head back out exploring. The reason we're going to do it this way is because when we have a bow and arrow, it is much easier to kill deer, and it's also much quicker. So again, we're going to do that, and we're looking to kill deer until we have three deer trophy. This is in order to spawn in Ikthar. Hey guys, Kaizen here. Just a quick amendment, you actually only need two deer trophies, not the three that I said in the video, so you're only looking for two to spawn in Ikthar. If you guys want to see me get things wrong on a regular basis, my Twitch will be linked down in the video description. If you want to come hang out, we do a lot of live streams on Valheim there, a lot of like fun things and stuff going on and just a lot of me being a noob like that getting stuff wrong so yeah check it out if you're interested let's get back to the video my strategy for playing this game early on is to rush killing Ikthar as he is a really easy boss to kill but killing him will also unlock some really useful things as we'll see later in this video okay so we've got a deer right there so we've got our bow here and with one shot 
the deer has been killed so a lot easier to just kill them like that and you can kill more than one at a time get yourself all the deer stuff that you want and we got lucky there and got ourselves a deer trophy we now only need two more of those and uh, that's why we want the bow it just makes life so much easier so day two is all about exploring basically we're going to go out explore all around our area and we're going to look to kill things the main focus being on killing deer but we also want to kill any neck and any boar that we see and get all of those resources as best we can looks like there's two here you see by shooting the deer as well it didn't scare off the other one and we are able to kill two deer there and okay we eventually scared the third one but still it makes life so much easier you'll get a lot more stuff this way now another awesome use for having the bow is when you find these beehives that you'll see in the abandoned structures around the place you absolutely want to stop and make sure you get these these are going to give you the best source of early game food and you see all i can do here is stand back and shoot them with my bow and eventually they will break every time they break they will drop honey and also a queen bee now it's broken right now but don't run straight over there because the bees are still around and will sting you just wait until the area clears and there we go we're gonna grab some honey which is the best early game food so we're gonna eat that give ourselves lots of extra hit points and up there there's a queen bee so we can jump up and grab the queen bee and when we get home the first thing we're gonna make is a beehive which i will show you in a second but this is a really really useful thing to have early game and you want to try and find as many beehives as possible so finding abandoned villages like this can be really useful do you make sure you check out all of the houses in them and go through all of the chests you get a lot of loot and it's obviously very easy and free to get another option you have is to place down a workbench in the village and start taking down all the structures in order to get yourself a lot of wood so definitely a thought if you want to do that so with day two over we managed to get ourselves a ton of resources as you can see right here and this is now all we're really going to need to start preparing for the Ikefer fight so in terms of the preparation first thing you want to do is get a beehive placed down so we can get that honey going on honey is incredibly useful so we don't do that first so as that's being produced we can be doing all of the other things the next thing i recommend that you do is go ahead and get yourself a chest placed down and uh, store a load of your stuff in there because at this stage you're in inventory is going to be getting pretty full and so you can just lighten the load a bit after that it's a good idea to spend a lot of time chopping down some trees i did a tutorial on my video about how you can get wood really fast so it'd be worth checking that out if you haven't seen it and if you're not familiar with it but at this stage that's the aim of the game just chop down a load of trees whilst chopping trees if you see any birds it's definitely worth shooting them and killing them we want their feathers and we want a lot of feathers as many as we can possibly get because we're going to use them to make up some fire arrows in order to kill like that more easily so next you can start getting yourself into cooking some food by placing cooking stands above fires just like this now you can place up to six uh, cooking stands above a fireplace if you're really careful about it i personally like to have five because i find then everything uh, obviously cooks in multiples of 10 which is like is nice uh, but then you just want to go ahead and throw all your food on and make sure it cooks and make sure you don't leave it too long because it will burn and turn to coal you want to make sure you're getting the food out of it because we need that food at this stage of the game and there we go once it starts to cook you can take it all off and you've got yourself some cooked meat which will be a really good food source early game and then you can go ahead and continue to cook it all up until all of your food is cooked if you find yourself in the position i'm in where i've only got two of the uh, necktails that i was able to cook up what you want to do is save those for the fight we're going to use them then don't eat them now and the fight's going to be cooked meat cooked necktails and also some honey which is of course being produced by our uh, bees over here obviously we're still waiting at the moment as we only just placed it down but we will have some of that in preparation for the ike fight another thing to do in preparation for the ike fight is to go ahead and make yourself up a deer rug if you have enough hide for it if we can increase the comfort of this area it makes sense to do it as we'll get a better rested buff which helps with st the health and stamina regen and that'll be useful for the Ike for fight. Next up, you want to make yourself a chopping block. If you've been picking up everything along the way, as I said, uh, then you'll have the 10 flint needed to do this. It just needs to be placed somewhere in, near to your workbench. And what it does is it upgrades the workbench to a level two and allows us to make fire arrows, which is what we're going to look to get into next. But in order to do that, we are going to need eight resin per 20 arrows. And so in order to get resin, we're going to need to go into the black forest biome and kill ourselves a load of gray dwarfs, which is why I said it's pretty useful to live near a black forest biome it's one of many reasons to be honest there is a lot of resources and things you'll need a black forest biome for so we're going to head on into ours now and kill a load of grey dwarfs to get that resin if you're struggling with grey dwarfs if you find a lot of them all at one time by holding a torch they will not come near you they will still run away and look to uh, throw things at you but right here i can get super close to them and get a load of hits on them and kill a load of them without them doing any damage to me so if you find a pack of them it can be worth just getting your torch out and doing that and uh, yeah then you're nice 
nice and protected uh, for the most part. Do be careful of trolls when you're in the Black Forest. If one comes at you and you're not prepared, simply run away. You will easily outrun them and uh, they're not worth fighting until you are ready. That being said, trolls are also quite useful because they drop troll armor. So if you've got a bow and arrow, it's probably worth actually fighting them uh, if you've got a good few arrows. I currently have 27 flint arrows on me because uh, I just happened to find them from all the exploring that I'd done. Um, so we're just going to do this. We're going to range the troll like this, get a good few hits in on him, and this will give us a nice piece of troll armor for when we're fighting Aether, which is pretty useful armor to have. Incidentally, I do have a guide video on my channel which teaches you how to fight trolls easily if you want to see this in more detail. And just like that, we've got our troll killed, and we're going to get ourselves here a nice bit of uh, troll leather there, or troll hides. Uh, in order to make the troll armor up with and we also got some coins and a troll trophy so not bad okay so with the resin and feathers and things now we're going to make up a load of the fire arrows so let's go ahead and make them up we can make i believe three lots so then we'll have 60 uh what are we missing out on here our oh, inventory is full oh it can't stack on there okay we'll just get rid of those for now craft these up here 20 40 and 60 and that's all of our resin done and then what we're going to do is make up a ton of wood arrows as well as our backup um because we'll probably need more than just the 20 that we have there another good thing to do before fighting Aether is to upgrade your bow as this could be useful later on um, and then what we're going to do right now we've just got the level two bow like that and uh, this is going to be enough okay so day three i've woken up i've put all my storage stuff away i've also upgraded my bow to a level two crude bow and that is all we're going to do in order to fight Aether. so this is all i'm taken with me guys we got one honey we got a bit of food here we got the three deer trophies to spawn him in 60 fire arrows and 100 just wooden arrows that's all we're going to use i don't even need to take any of this other stuff with me he's that easy so we're going to head over to his altar now spawn him in and kill him okay so here we are up at Aitha's altar so what we want to do now is uh, go ahead and eat all of the food that we can eat here like this wait for that to take effect a little bit uh, and then we just need to let's get rid of huge in as well then we just need to look at the uh, altar here if we put the deer trophies up to say number six we just press number six and we'll spawn him in we've got our uh, bow at the ready we're going to right click the fire arrows to make sure we're shooting those first and heading through trees if there's trees nearby which there always has been for me is definitely useful because you can sort of hide behind the trees a bit when you're fighting so there we go he spawned in and we're going to go ahead and you want to make sure you're being accurate with your shots that's the main thing in terms of this working so there i got a little bit too close to him but even that didn't do too much of a damage to me and when he gets close he stops to do his attack and he can run away as you can see i've got him down to almost third health uh, at the moment or by a third of his health i should say and all we've got is a crude bow at level two and fire arrows that's all we're doing this with and just like that guys he's dead and it was really really simple uh didn't cause me any problems really at all um so why am i rushing the Aether boss so much well there's a couple of reasons let's grab all the stuff that we've got here make sure we've got all of that there we go so the hard antlers are useful because they're going to give us uh, what we need in order to make our first pickaxe which will unlock the bronze age to us and it is definitely worth rushing this before you start doing any kind of serious resource gathering and i'll show you why that is in a second the other thing as well is the Aether trophy that you get from killing him which we're going to run to spawn now and uh, put up that's obviously the next step in the 50 step process and uh, that is going to give us uh, the stamina and health regen buffs that we get when our Aether ability is activated. Again, super useful for everything you do in the game, pretty much. So, given such an easy boss, well worth doing. Now, as you see there, I got through, I think, one extra stake. Um, I didn't even use the two necktails use just the one honey and i killed him with 29 fire arrows and a level two crude bow so this is why i was saying like it's well worth rushing him it's really easy to kill him and it has a huge payoff uh, in terms of the reward that you get versus the risk that there is of like you dying or whatever which probably won't happen and there we go we've done the hook there and we can activate that power and uh, we get that extra um, stamina buffs and that from this, which is obviously very, very useful. And we're going to activate our uh, Aether ability right now for our journey home. And then we're going to get on with uh, getting on with the next steps. Next up, it's time to start a boar breeding process. And the best way of doing this is to stay somewhere near your base, but uh, give yourself a little bit of space as well around here. And try and find a bit of an open area. I'm actually right in the middle of forest, which is rare. You normally won't have that sort of issue. Then we can go ahead and place down a crafting bench and build a a little bit of a pen to keep the boars in so what we're going to do is build it two this way like this and then place two this way like this and two this way like this and then finally two this way like this now what we're going to do in a second is go and get some boar and we're going to trap one boar in here 
and we're going to trap the other ball in there and i'll explain why that is in a minute but this simple little structure right here is the first step into breeding boar and okay here's a boar very good uh, we found one quickly in fact there's two here so that's great we've got one for later if you can find a one or if you're really lucky a two star boar those are preferable but uh, any boar at this stage of the game is good just to get your breeding process underway and you can start farming the meat and the leather scraps uh, so we're just going to get to chase this. He'll sort of chase and then run away and chase again. And as I say, we're going to do this until we get back to the pen area. And then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so we're back at the pen. The boar is somewhere around here. He'll keep chasing us. So with this selected, we just want to come back here and let him run until he's in this pen. And then we're going to place this down. So here he is. Come on over, dude. There we go. Get him to chase us. And when he's in here, we place that down. And then we run away because he's going to be frightened. Then we just need to repeat the process with another boar. I think I saw one just around here a second ago. Yep, there we go. Another boar. So we'll get this one to chase us and we'll put him in the pen next to the other one. Okay, so he's coming back now. This boar over here is going to attack the fences and stuff. But don't worry, they won't get destroyed in this short amount of time. And voila. Now it looks like I didn't place that one correctly in the first place, but I just caught it there. Okay, so then at this stage, what you want to do is go ahead and grab yourself a load of raspberries. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so I'll grab 20 raspberries here and I'm going to split them into two groups of 10. And we're going to feed them to the boar. Uh, now this will, uh, the boar will then eat them while we're not around. And uh, by doing this, this this will start to tame them so um, if i can get over the log we're going to jump up here like this and throw 10 into this pen there we go they did land in there just about and then we're going to do the same over here so from here throw 10 into this pen and we missed and we're gonna have to repeat the process until we get them all in okay so now they each have their um their food in their pen you can see they've done minimal damage to the fence so you can always repair it as well if you want but essentially now you just want to run away make sure there's no fires near them because that will also scare them and once you're away they will start to eat the food and start to tame the next step is to go ahead and make up the antler pickaxe which you can do with one hard antler and the 10 wood and this is going to be used to get us into the bronze age so the next thing we want to do here is put oh is it just two deer trophy to spawn like that maybe i was wrong when i said three uh my my apologies for that if i was incorrect uh either way they're not that difficult to get so you guys won't have any issues with that uh, so i'm gonna clear my storage now and then head off again and once you've got your pickaxe you can of course use it to dig out one of the uh boat graveyard things i mentioned earlier that you've marked out and find yourself a loot chest for some extra treasure so at this stage of the game you want to come to a black forest and find yourself some of these pine trees that you see here they can be chopped down with just a stone axe and what we're going to get from them is some core wood now at this stage we don't actually need too much of the core wood but we do want 20 and i'll show you why that is in just a second so now with your 20 core wood you can make yourself up a stag breaker you see you need 20 core five deer trophy and two leather scraps you also need your workbench to be at level two but of course we did that earlier in the episode now the reason you want the stag breaker is this is going to be very useful for when you're exploring burial chambers which is the next step as we're looking to get some certain cores and you really need five of them if you can get 10 that's amazing if you get five it is enough and i will show you that in a bit in this video but first let's talk about the gearing up for going off to the burial chambers which are found in black forest biomes you'll have to explore around i'll show you later in this video what they look like but the things you want to take with you now first of all a wooden shield uh, the reason for that is it can parry and you want that instead of one of these wooden tower shields for example as they don't have the parry ability now when you craft a wooden shield just a little tip here you can go to style and choose a different color if you want you see i went for a red and black one just there the other thing that you want to do is make sure you're taking your bow with you and some arrows a good amount of arrows is never a bad thing to have so i've got some fire arrows here the flint ones that i found and of course those wooden ones we made earlier a torch isn't a terrible idea as it can get a little dark although most of the time you're not going to want to have a torch wielded you'll want a weapon wielded so i'm just mentioning that you might want it but it's not essential you can also take your antler pickaxe because after we've done the burial chamber we are going to grab ourselves a bit of copper and tin ore and again i'll come on to why that is later you want to take a club as these are good against skeletons and of course you want to take a good amount of food with you as well whatever food you've got so cooked meat and uh, raspberries and also some honey from the honey farm is what i'll be taking instantly you'll see i've now got these two extra beehives here from doing a bit of extra exploration do make sure you don't place them right next to each other i've left this bit of space in between them on purpose as they are less productive if they are too close together whilst exploring the black forest if you do see any blueberries do make sure to pick them up similarly if you see any carrot seeds or thistles do get all of those as well they will definitely come in handy later on in the game 
Incidentally, this is what carrot seeds look like in the black forest biome. They're very handy to have, so do make sure you pick them up when you're exploring. Now, again, it can be worth marking things on the map while it's going through the black forest biome. So right here, we've, of course, got a copper deposit, and I should have marked the blueberries earlier as well, so make sure you do that. It's just good to know where stuff is, because later on in the game, it could be very useful for you. Now, if when you're in the black forest, you see a structure like this, it's definitely worth going up here and uh, getting the uh, the tablet there and, and selecting that, because it will give you the location for the elder boss. So that is how you're going to do that. The other thing to say is these um, barrels right here, uh, let's grab one of these, uh, we can smash these open, right? And you get a load of stuff inside there. You see we found some coal inside, which is really useful and some other stuff. So uh, definitely worth checking these out for sure. And I also smashed up the stool right there, which gave me a little bit of fine wood. Not really going to do that much, but it does unlock some new recipes for us later on in the game. We're going to come more into fine wood later on, but I just wanted you to know that was a possibility. Now, if you find yourself a grade off spawner, like you see over here, you want to make a note of where this position is, because you're going to need this to get the seeds to spawn in the elder. This is one type of barrel chamber that you can find, and I find these to be the more common of the two types, but there is another type which you can find as well. And this right here is another type of uh, burial chamber that you will see a bit more buried and sort of hidden in the hills there as you can see but uh, it will still provide the same drops and things that you can expect elsewhere and the stag breaker can be used even here when you've got multiple mobs to get a good few hits in on them all uh, while they're attacking you because it can be difficult to uh, sometimes kill more than one mob at a time and as you see there, we've got a good few hits on those. And then we can just go back and... Oh, I actually punched him to death. But uh, I meant to get a club, but you guys get the point. So once we've cleared out the, the skeletons outside, we're going to head on in. So again, make sure all your food is eaten. If there's anything you can eat, make sure you do. And I like to go in with my shield and my club at the ready. And I save the stag breaker for when I need it. So we're going to enter in here now. And here we go, burial chambers. Now, whether you find the first type I showed you or these, they all look the same on the inside. Let me go ahead and get my torch equipped so you can see a little bit better. But you'll have a to the left of you one in front and one to the right and at this point you just need to explore and that's what i'm going to do now and then show you everything you can expect along the way so first up down here we've got a skeleton there waiting to get us so when we see this uh we can just get him to oh, okay he's actually got a bow so some skeletons have bows others are the melee that you see there so we can come around here like this and just like parry him and then give him a couple of hits and uh, kill him and then we'll take care of the one with the bow so here he is again we can just block that get a few hits on him and uh, there we go, we've actually staggered him there, and we're going to kill him. So that's why we like to have the club, as it is good against skeletons. There's another one there. You see, if I hide around the corner, the one with the bow will come close to us, and we can just block and kill him when we want to. You'll also find these yellow mushroom things around on the floor. It's worth picking them up, as you will need them later in the game. Now, through this door right here is a spawner. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've opened the door, and whenever you get to a door in a barrel chamber, it's not a bad idea to open it and be prepared to shut it again like that. So I'm going to get my stag breaker, I'm going to open the door, Door, and I'm going to go in and just do a big hit straight off the bat there. And that's going to attack both the evil bone pile that you see there, which is the skeleton spawner, and any mobs nearby. And with a good few hits on here, we're going to kill most of the mobs and the spawner too. And then we can get back now to just blocking here. This is a one-star skeleton, so he's a bit more tough. And uh, then we can block him, though, and give him a good few hits until he dies. But by destroying the spawner, it just means that we're not going to have more spawning uh, in here. And you'll also find loot rooms like this. And these things right here are what we're looking for. These are the certain cores. As I said, you want at least five of them, but uh, ten is preferred. And, of course, you can loot all of these chests as well. Do look on the table. You see there's some amber pearls. And sometimes you'll find things. There we go. There's something on the floor. There is it. Oh, no, it's just a rock. But sometimes there's things on the floor in that as well. So do have a good look around in these. And sometimes you'll find certain cores just in little places like this. We explored through the door here, and there they were. And this is why you do want to explore the whole thing. The other thing to say is if you find some mobs that are attacking you and you get into a bit of trouble, you can, of course, run away a little bit and come back and uh, you know, recover to fight them. You can even exit out of the chamber here like this, of course, and they will not follow you out. Um, however, if I was like down this one right here, for example, and there's a load of mobs here, a load of skeletons chasing me and I'm getting into some trouble, uh, I can escape and whatever, but you do need to come back and then kill them before exploring the rest. I made this mistake early in the game where I like I thought they were like way down there and we were good. I started exploring down here and they followed me in and then I'd meet mobs like here in front of me and then there's some behind me and at that point you're probably going to die. So if you get into trouble, you just need to keep like getting your bearings again, coming back and then uh, killing them. Now one useful tip, particularly if you're new to the game, you can see in this 
section here. I've got a door here, a door here, and also a door here. Now, what can be a good idea is once I've explored through these two doors, come back and leave these two doors shut and leave this door open. This opens out, incidentally, into the main chamber area, which I'll show you in a second. The reason being, I can now come into here and I am completely safe. The doors are shut behind me. I'll run through this door that I left open and shut it behind me and I'm safe and I can come in here I can eat my food I can regen because as you see there's a ghost and I was fighting a load of skeletons as well got me down to about 25 health so it was a bit low so I just thought I'd come in here take a breather for a moment if I open this door up you'll see this is where we are out here so if you find one of these situations make the most of it guys have those doors shut now I'm going to teach you about how to fight a ghost and for that we definitely want our bow and let's go ahead and select the fire arrows as well okay so next up we're going to talk about fighting ghosts and uh, I think there was one there we go just through here and you want to range these and shoot them uh, with your bow and arrows and then you can get out of the way of their attacks come back and range them and just do it like this and they often get like a little bit stuck in these sorts of places meleeing them is not very efficient and uh, doesn't do much damage we see here this one's not far off being dead if we can just land another hit on it he'll be dead and the fire is continuing to hit him even after we're done with it down to very low health right now so one more hit and there we go he's gonna die just like that and we've got some more certain cores here to pick up okay through this door we have another ghost and i want to talk about something here so you see here when they get a hit on you i want to try and let this guy hit me they do a lot of damage all right that took me down by about 20 hit points or something like that so at this stage of the game right it depends on how lucky you've been like right now i've got six certain core on me we only need five so you could, if you wanted to, just kind of shut the door on them and go off. If you do want to fight them, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult sometimes. But the way to do it is like I showed before. So what we want to do is just be ready for him. And so I'm going to have my bow here. Let him come to us. And we're ready to just get a shot off at him. And then hide. And we can hide behind the walls. And he's come in here. You see he's chasing me through. And then there we go. He's gone again. And we're, again, we're just waiting here so that we're ready for him. Okay, I think he disappeared. I think we might have actually killed him. Uh, and we're going to get those extra certain cores. Now, this brings me on to another point. Uh, something else you can find. You see here all the treasure around. That's why we want to look everywhere. But this thing right here, this is how you're going to get the Elder location. It's uh, another way of doing that. So you do want to make sure that you look out for these sorts of tablets in the burial chambers. Because they can unlock the Elder location. So just before we leave, I just want to say one final thing. I've explored a few of these chambers now. And I've not been able to find one of these to show on cam. But you sometimes will see like a glowing green skeleton. Those are poisonous skeletons and are best to be avoided at this stage of the game. You can always mark the location of the chamber on your map when you leave and come back later, but they are really, really difficult to beat, and we are doing this with minimal amounts of armor and weapons at this stage. To come and do one of these with just a wooden club and a wooden shield and stuff is pretty minimal, but we're all after rushing these certain cores, and I'm going to show you why that is in a moment. So before you leave the Black Forest biome, what you need to do is find yourself a copper deposit like this, and in total we're going to get six copper ore. So copper looks like this you just mine away at this with your antler pickaxe and uh, we're going to get just the bare minimum that we need to advance to the next stage of the game and again i will show you why that is in a second so you just keep mining like this and it breaks away and sometimes you get some sometimes you get a couple sometimes you get one Sometimes you get none, and we've got none just there. So we're just going to keep doing this until we have the eight copper ore. Okay, so you can see here we've got the eight copper ore, and the final thing we're going to do before we go is get some tin, and here we go, some tin right here. So tin looks like this, and is always found somewhere near water. Obviously, we've got the water just here, and we only need one tin ore before we go back. And again, I'm going to show you what this is for in a second. There we go. But uh, as I say, uh, the tin will often drop three or four per one. So once you find one, you're good. So you've got your eight copper, you've got your uh, one plus tin ore, and you've got your five or more certain cores. And at that stage, you're ready to leave the Black Forest and head home. So now that we're back at our base, what we're going to do is use the certain cores in conjunction with some stone, and we're going to make a charcoal kiln and also a smelter. Now, you'll see here these take five certain cores each. If you only manage to get five, here's what you need to do. Place down your charcoal kiln, just like this, and then you want to put a load of wood into it. So I'm just going to put one in now to show you. But you can see you can have 25 at a time. So you're going to put in bulk amounts of wood. Maybe have a little chest nearby. Because what you're going to get out of this is coal. Which is quite heavy. You're then going to use the coal to uh, basically smelt down the ore. I'm just going to get rid of this dude right here. And here we go. The coal has come out. And we can pick up. Oops. Sorry. Pick up the coal just like that. And uh, there we go. So I would say you can have a chest down here. And put loads of wood in there. And as it comes out put the coal in there. Then what you can do is go ahead. Ahead and break this and you will get the five certain cores back 
when you break it. So this is why you only technically need five, because you could then just go ahead and place down your smelter, which is the next stage, and uh, use your coal and stuff in the smelter. So at this stage, you've got yourself a good load of coal, you've got some of the copper, and you've got some of the tin. The next thing to do then is to load all of your coal into the smelter, just like this, and then you want to load as much ore as you can in. You can only do 10 at a time. And if it's turning nighttime, the best thing to do now is to go and sleep, because when you wake up in the morning, all of that stuff that was smelting will be done instantly and you won't have to wait. And here we go. In the morning, all of this stuff is now waiting for us, all of this copper. And this will unlock a load of new recipes for us. And we can put the final um, recipes, uh, ores and stuff in there. And we got ourselves the one tin as well. So the reason we wanted eight copper and one tin is we're going to make a couple of things. To start with, you want to go ahead and make yourself a forge, as you can see here. So uh, that's what six of the copper is for. Let me get the coal and stone and then I'll show you why we're doing this. Okay, so here we go. We're going to place our forge down just in here and this is going to give us even more recipes that we're able to now make. Now I've just placed it in here because it's under cover and stuff and I'm coming towards the end of this 50 step process. Obviously you may want to make a bit of a nicer area than what I've done here. I'm just going through exactly how you're going to do it but not uh, necessarily the way in which you'll do it personally. So now we can use the forge and we're going to make up some bronze. Now with the two copper and one tin we can make up a single piece of bronze you see it just over here and with that we can make up some bronze nails and this is the bit that we've been trying to get to that's going to get us to the next stage of the game the reason being is now with our hammer under the miscellaneous section we can make a cart so let me go ahead and get the wood and i'll show you that so here we go the cart right there needs those bronze nails and we can place that down now when we open this up we have all of this storage that we can store all of our things in and what this means is we can go far afield to get a load of resources and put them in here we're no longer limited by our weight that we have on us because we have all of this extra storage space so at this point of the game it's now up to you guys in terms of how do you want to progress i mean this game there's so many different ways you can play it, and none of them are wrong you should play this game the way that you enjoy it and today's video was just intended to get you off to a good and useful start so that you can continue onwards now what i would do at this point is my boar are probably tame or close to it uh not quite they're still frightened but they are what are they on right now let's see here like 84 percent so once they're both tame what i'll do is tear down that fence in between keep feeding them and they'll breed with each other and get a boar breeding process going and then i might look to get into carrots and that sort of thing the reason we rushed this stuff though guys, I've explained the Ikefer, the reason that we rushed the storage cart is because it gives us so much extra stuff right here that we can use uh, when we're gathering resources. So the way in which I would personally do this would be to head off to the Black Forest biome, make the cart whilst you're there because then you have to pull it all the way there because you, when you're pulling it, it can be like a bit difficult and you can bump into objects and it can take damage and stuff like this. So you just need to be careful. Uh, but then we can just pull it home at the end with all of the stuff we got on us and you can dodge roll to get in and out very quickly by the way. Um, but you might want to get into a load of building for your base, in which case you can take the cart off and start filling up with a load of wood from trees you've chopped down or whatever else you want to do. The point is, whatever way you progress, you're going to need to be hauling around a lot of resources early game. The cart is sort of the holy grail of this process, and that is why it is the last thing I wanted to mention in today's video. I really hope this video has helped you guys. If you have any questions, you can ask me them in real time over on my Twitch. There'll be a link in the description to that. And just see me derp around playing Valheim and doing all kinds of other things, including the Valheim server I'm launching, which anyone will be able to join through my Patreon. All information on that you can find in my Twitch and also on my Discord. All of the links are down in the description. Today's video was intended to help you get off to a good start. I'm sure there's things that I could have done differently or things I might have missed. Please do feel free to share them down in the comments and get a bit of a discussion going about this. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. And for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, here come the dad jokes. Who is Thor's favorite singer? MC Hammer. Why was Thor avoiding his brother? He owed him money. How do Viking sailors say hello to each other when they're on different ships? Of course, they wave. And what if they can't see each other? Well, then they use Norse code. Why couldn't the Viking get out of bed the day after running a marathon? He was too Thor to move. What do you get when you cross a Viking with a spider? A Thorantula. How many Vikings does it take to change a light bulb? Vikings didn't have light bulbs, don't be silly.